have um, toddler pin on night and I forget. According to my grandmother, donkey don't know nothing about toothpick. But since I'm speaking about self-love and I'm coming through the paradigm of identity, I wanted to lean into my Grenadian identity. And just before I engage the message this morning, sing my national anthem. I have to stand at attention. Hail Grenada, land of Oz, we pledge ourselves to thee. Heads, hearts, and hands in unity to reach our destiny. Ever conscious of God, being proud of our heritage, may we with faith and courage aspire, build, advance as one people, one family. God bless our nation. Yes. Forty-seven. Years, thank you so much, Leandria, or Leandra. Leandria is one of my favorite singers, so take it as a compliment. The book of Genesis is a book of origin. And since I'm speaking about self-love, I wanted to talk about origins this morning. I want to talk about your beginning. I want to talk about your real identity. Because you see, so often we begin the human story as worthless sinner. How many of you have heard that? I am a sinner saved by grace. And perhaps that is part of our own struggle to grapple with whose we are. I know who, I know who God says I am, what he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know whose I am, but do we? Do we? Because if we seek to begin our story as worthless sinner, then we don't know who we really are and whose we really are. You see, I want you to understand this morning the lofty place from which you fell from. The place that you have identified with. Somehow we have only identified with sinner. But we have not managed to reconcile the story of restoration and reconciliation. Putting us back in the place where we used to be and should have been with God. So turn in your Bible with me. And I shan't be long. Because today is my independence, and I intend to finish with you swiftly and go get my hair did, so I can celebrate. Has everything in it that's nice. So chapter two, shows us a summary of the creation story. And there are some who would use how chapter 1 
is written versus how chapter 2 is written to say that there are two different accounts of the creation story. No, there ain't. Chapter 1 gives you a ball-by-ball -ball coverage, and chapter 2 gives you a summary. Right? So it's one story. So verse 4 says, this is the history of the heavens and the earth. Your version might have generations. The word there just speaks of the history, an account of the creation of the earth. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land. And a mist was going up from the land, and there was watering the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord formed man out of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living creature. Some of your versions would have, man became a living soul. In Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16, I think it is. Where are the theologians? Howard. All scripture is inspired. It's God-breathed. Ever wonder why God said I, he has exalted his word above his own name because the word of God is the very life of God. It is the breath of God. <sighs> so when Paul said in Timothy that all scripture is God-breathed, Paul was saying that scripture contains the life of God. In Genesis 2, verse 7, we're told that God Formed And the imagery that we're having here is of a porter with his clay. Now, we may not understand the intricacies and the passion and everything that goes into pottery. But what the image wants to bring to our mind is that while for the rest of creation, God would have said, let there be that God became intimately involved in the creation of mankind. That he felt it and he touched it and he molded it and he fashioned it with his own hand. So that makes you the handwork of almighty God. That makes you his masterpiece. That makes you his masterpiece. That makes you his masterpiece. 